good morning uh, guys welcome back to AU Cannoning uh, today I've got something special for you so I've recently heard about the uh, U fusion and I thought or the double float cannon and I thought to myself oh let's uh, let's give it a go so this is what I've come up with um, I'll be explaining uh, the whole concept behind this cannon how you uh, can make it yourself and yeah, so let's get started So to start off you'll notice that we have uh, two powers here So and what this is doing is this is what we're going to call um, power one And what this power is doing is it's shooting our other power into a separate barrel So we could stick this barrel anywhere as long as it's within one game tick range and I'll show you how you can calculate the range of your cannons in a second okay yeah so you can put this barrel anywhere say you've got a faction server you want to put this barrel at the front of your buffer so then you can just like alternate um, like your countering uh, it's pretty pretty broken I'm sure it won't be in factions or like allowed for very long so yeah so that's the practical use of this so yeah so now let's talk about how you actually build one. So it's kind of the same as a normal cannon. You have your first power or your um, your fusion. You've got one side going off, let's say, at zero ticks. The other side going off at two ticks. A regular fusion. I've kind of explained this in the past. And what this is doing is the first pulse is sending your sand through uh, to your separate barrel. And that sand's going to hit this anvil. And then the second pulse is sending your hammer through and your nuke hammer. And that's also going to hit this anvil. So if you can kind of picture it, an anvil is slightly thinner than a block. So then um, it'll look something like this. I'll explain where I'm getting this in a sec. But it's kind of if you can picture it inside uh, the anvil. And that's so there is no east to west, pa uh, east to west patch bugs. Because often if you're adjust, sorry, I got my toggle shift on. Often if you're adjusting one way, let's say for instance, um, you're adjusting uh, this way and then out, and then you're also making another adjustment. The game's probably, or the east to west patch on a lot of servers, probably won't be too great if it's on a 45 degree angle. Because which way do you want to shoot, right? You could shoot this way, you could shoot this way. It just doesn't know. So that's why we have the anvil there. And um, let's take a look at the barrel now. So that's how the sand and the hammer shoots out into the separate barrel. Um, now let's take a look at the other power. So if we take a look at the barrel, you notice we've got two stairs, not just one. One of these is for our secondary power, or the power at the front of our walls. Let's call it the wall power. One of this is for our wall power, and the other one's for our sand and stuff. So I'm just going to highlight that, just like this uh, for now, so we keep it in our memory. So if you notice, um, our powers, yes, our, our wall powers, just feeding uh, into into um, into this little semi barrel on top of the ladder, and then we've got a little booster coming down from above to triangle that up into that stair. So what this means is by having these side by side, I can have different guider levels. So if you look up, we're going to have our sand. Let's get some sandstone. Uh, slightly above our um, TNT. And what this does two things. One, it enables us to do uh, webs like this on a diagonal. So they cannot uh, pearl through that. Because obviously if you've got a too high... You can actually just go straight through it. So that's uh, that's one thing that it's doing. Oh. The other thing that it's doing is we can now... Oh, this is meant to be one over. We can now uh, input where we would like this to shoot. So for example, if we want the sand shooting slightly above the power, then when it gets to our second barrel at the front of the walls, it's going to look something like this our power is then going to triangle it up. So it's quite a basic concept. It just took 
I'm not sure who came with up with it exactly. It's it's not me. So um, yeah, it's it's not me who came up with this concept. But um, that's what it's going to look like in your uh, wall barrel. Then of course, uh, technically we can like adjust this over if we want as well. So let's say for example they decide. They, they've figured out what you're doing with your double barrel and they've actually just blown it to pieces which is what most people will do after the first or second attempt. Uh, you need a way of adjusting for that and with this cannon um, I'll show you, I'm gonna make it a one rev very shortly but what you can actually do is you can just um, you can just maybe adjust over again and you can have like a, a backup barrel if you want or you don't even need the second power at all and you can just shoot a regular shot and I'll show you the practical uses of this uh, shortly so yeah so I've got um, my power for the walls so the wall power I've got that ticking off one game tick after the regular power and the reason for this is if I don't game tick this sand with the power then the sands gonna fall down it's gonna break and the cannon won't work in exactly the same way that if I don't game tick this stair with the sand so if I don't have a huge boost that I shoot it in in one game tick uh, it's just gonna break and do nothing so yeah I'm going to explain to you now uh, the practical application of this by showing you the base design I've come up with so um, Home. home base okay so let's just take a look at this shall we so we've got a 5x5 five five chunk sorry not 5x5 yeah 5x5 five five chunk base layout with some uh, extras on the sides and what the um, basic design is we're going to have our spawners at Y level 180 and then just a ton of roof layers and then um, finster walls and what that's going to do is that's going to force them um, to shoot multiple times per wall because obviously they can't nuke finsters and if they want to get anything they're going to, going to have to shoot low um, so that's going to give us maybe uh, four times as much time to defend the base that's because they've got to shoot at least four times every finster wall but I guess there is only one every three blocks so that yeah you do the math on that four times by two over three and yeah so we didn't manage to get a corner on the Archons so um, I've just simulated the world border with this glass and then let's go to the end where I'll show you the actual layout of the counter and I'll show you also how to calculate your uh, distance that you can shoot so we're going to have an ocean and we're actually not going to have a, f a wall at the front of our ocean so because it's oceaned all the way up we're going to have a little bit of spillage and this is just simulating what that's going to look like and then what we can do with our obsidian breaker pickaxes is we can have uh, down these gaps here where there's no base uh, there's no boxes to it sorry we can just um, auto adjust uh, off here with obsidian breaker and we can just st shoot straight through uh, to their box wherever um, imagine this is at uh, like a wall up to 255 let's come up here and yeah so this is that setup I showed you before with the webs on the diagonal so uh, if we go inside here going to have our TNT uh, hitting this block and then our sand hitting this anvil that's uh, going to go up until maybe we have a guider here let's say for instance and th this is just showing just how incredibly easy it is to oh and just overpowered it is to use this type of counter cannon we could we could have some guy in here just freely adjusting um, maybe going like alternating every uh, fifth shot and they really cannot defend this while trying to breach us it's just not going to happen 
so yeah so let's say it comes all the way up here to 255 then shoots out uh, in between these two blocks so I've left a two block gap here this is just the um, trays it's going to come out and we can just set up a guider like that our TNT and our sand is going to hit this guider and just shoot straight out um, because we have no walls in front so it, it's just like alternating um, with with a counter cannon basically and it's it's ridiculously overpowered um, so that's the concept oh that's how you would operate a cannon like this um, so I'll ca show you how to calculate the distance you can uh, shoot for your second barrel uh, in two seconds if I just go uh, this way I've set up my little adjustment box so uh, this looks pretty familiar with our TNT and our sand imagine the cannons here TNT and sand hitting here uh, it goes into our little um, second adjustment box or technically it's the first TNT is hitting here our sand's hitting here and then we'll get it looking like this uh, in the barrel and then we can adjust again so adjusting right and then if I wanted to adjust to the left I could um, have my TNT oh sorry toggle shifts on TNT and sand looking like this and I can just break that block very simply um, the only there is one downside to this you'd need multiple people operating the counter at once but I mean adjusting left I guess that compens I guess the fact that they'll need at least 10 people trying to defend their box uh, sorry right I guess them trying to defend with about 10 people against this counter cannon compensates that quite easily okay so now let's go back to the cannon and I'm gonna show you how you can calculate the exact distance you need your second barrel to be or the maximum distance so what we're going to do is we're going to select um, our second power and we want to select the second um, pulse of this so there's two pulses two ticks apart for the fusion so let's just do slash CS this is called Canon debug debug it's a really good plug-in now what we're going to get it, do is we're going to go and fire this there might be a bit of lag um, I'm sorry there is a lot of dispensers you'll see it hit oh shit yes that's what it looks like and then if we do sorry if my dog's barking and you can hear it CHA we click on ID1 C page uh, 11 uh, this won't tell us it, we will have to go one page before. Uh, nine. Bear with me. Why is it not giving me the velocity? Maybe because it's in one game tick. Um, so it goes here and then it's here, but we don't get the velocity. I know why. Um, I'm just going to disable the sand for this shot because I don't want shit all over my plot. The reason is because it's hitting this in one game tick, it's not going to really register, so I'm just going to fire again. I just want it to fire past, see exactly how far it'll go. Oh man, I'll TNT toggle, I promise. <laughs> okay, so that was the hammer. Uh, CHA. Let's go to C page 10. Okay, Z velocity, here we go. So, as you can see, it is uh, 294 blocks per tick. Um, obviously, because of Oh, not obviously, but it's going to slow down over each game tick. So next game tick will be, um, it would be uh, like about 280 something. But because it's hitting the, w uh, the world border, it's not registering. Okay, so 
that's how you find the distance traveled, the Z velocity. That means that in the first game tick, your secondary adjustment box, or the box on the edge of your walls, has to be um, 294 blocks away. Um, if it's more than that, then your TNT is going to fall, and then it's not going to make it through the web. Uh, so that's the most efficient way of calculating that, uh, your distance. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll show you the cannon in action, shall I? Uh, so here it's just going to hit here, stack and break. Okay, TNT toggle. Let's give it two shots just so you know what. Actually, we'll go th three shots. Let me know if you want me to show you how to make this clock. This is three seconds. Uh, let's give this a go. Oh, sand, my bad. Ignore me, I'm a griefer. Let's try again, shall we? Oh, you trolling me. Alrighty. And that's a that is nuking um, not to bedrock to Y level like two or something. Yeah, Y level two or three. And that's just to piss them off when they go to fix up the base. Really, I mean, I could make it nuke to bedrock, but that's completely fine. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you want to go ahead, uh, try and make your own one. It's really not too difficult. It's the theory behind it's common sense. You just need to have a bit of canon knowledge, um, how to game tick things with, uh, with um, like something like this, for example, with the two and a half ticks or five game ticks. And yeah, so that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you did. And I'll catch you. Uh, I'll catch you guys uh, a bit later.